I am a huge football fan. I've watched hundreds of games, seen tons of injuries, but no injury has quite measured up to the Joe Theismann broken leg. I actually wasn't alive when he broke the leg, but I've seen the footage over and over again. The injury was famously featured at the beginning of The Blind Side, where Sandra Bullock talks about the importance of a good offensive line, and that's super true. You need a good left tackle to protect the quarterback. What's going on, y'all? Thanks so much for coming back. My name is Jake, and welcome to my channel. This week, I'm going to talk about the famous Joe Theismann broken leg. We'll talk about the mechanism of injury, look at some x-rays, talk about his treatment and recovery, and talk about kind of the implications that the injury had on his career. So the year was 1985. The Giants were playing the Redskins. Theismann was coming off an MVP winning season the year before. He'd actually been struggling in the current season. And in one of the most famous football plays of all time, Joe Theismann drops back to pass, is looking for a receiver open downfield. Coming around the corner is Lawrence Taylor, who rolls up on the leg and snaps the leg basically in half. So let's review the footage of the Joe Theismann injury. So here's Joe under center. He's going to take the snap and drop back. It's going to be a flea flicker play. So if the ball is first handed off before it's pitched back to him, and then there's the head, and then there's the subsequent pile up. Let's take a look at the injury from an angle that we can actually see what happens. So here's Theismann here, obviously, and here's Lawrence Taylor, number 56. He's going to be the one that falls on Joe Theismann and causes the injury. So here comes Taylor, and he basically jumps on Theismann's back. And right here, you see his, his leg is coming in, and it hits Joe Theismann's leg at with a pretty severe force. So keep in mind that Lawrence Taylor's like 243 pounds, one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. Here's the injury, and here's here's the shot where you can really see Theismann's leg is broken. I mean, you can see that this angle is not obviously a natural or normal angle for the leg. He's on the ground in a very awkward position, and that, that bone is obviously clearly broken, or both bones, I should say. And then he gets rolled upon more, and there's one, two, three, four, five guys now on him as he's rolling onto that leg even more. Lawrence Taylor is obviously very upset. He heard the bones break. Everyone that was on the field that day heard the bones break. And here's the medical team attending to Theismann as he's on the ground. Uh, Joe said it himself when he got injured initially, he had excruciating pain, obviously. Both bones in his leg broke. By the time the medical team had come to attend to his wound, his leg was completely numb. He said he couldn't feel a thing. So they obviously get him on the stretcher and take him to the hospital. And I already talked about, they didn't set the bones in place on the field because the bones are dirty and you don't want to reintroduce dirty bones back into the body where they can cause a basically a terrible infection. I actually read a firsthand account of this, but as Joe was on the ground and the referee was looking at him, the ref like moved the broken leg a little bit and blood shot into the referee's chest, which if I heard that, I'd be really nervous that an artery or something had perforated or there was some sort of active bleeding going on. So now I'm gonna review kind of the normal anatomy of the leg, which includes the muscles, the veins, the arteries, and the nerves. There's all sorts of things that are going on in the leg and all the surrounding tissues and structures next to the bones are at risk of injury when you have a bone that completely snaps and the bones have very sharp edges obviously so they can do a lot of damage and it can be a very very bad thing to have sharp bones cutting through the soft tissues because the nerves veins and arteries can be involved in the trauma of such a break so i'm going to hide the muscles here and as you can see, so th this, I'm leaving the cardiovascular system, so all the veins and arteries, and, and then there's nerves as well here. So there's a lot of things going on in the leg. All these veins, all these arteries, and the nerves are at risk in an injury like Joe Theismann's where he basically has a complete fracture of the bone, which leaves very sharp shards of bone that can basically cut right through these structures. So I'm gonna hide now the veins and the arteries and the nerves as well, and there go the nerves. So let's just look at the normal bones of the lower leg. So I'm really just gonna talk about the two. The first one on, this small one on the lateral side is the fibula. The fibula does not really provide any sort of weight bearing benefit to the leg. It's really just meant for stabilization of the ankle. And then this bigger bone here, the tibia, attaches to the femur, which is basically the thigh bone, it provides the major weight bearing of the lower extremity. And in Joe Theismann's case, both bones were completely broken. And if enough force generally is, a, is applied to break the tibia, the bigger bone, the fibula will break with it. And that was the case of Joe Theismann. So here's a normal x-ray. It's basically the same thing we just looked at. So again, here's the tibia, then here's the fibula running up here along with it. And so Joe Theismann's leg looked like this before it was completely broken. So this is not Joe Theismann's actual x-ray, but this is something like what his x-ray might have looked like. There are just shards of bone everywhere in this leg. The bones, both bones are just completely broken. And this is what we call a compound or open fracture, and that's what Joe Theismann had. A compound or open fracture is basically when the bone shards cut through the skin and expose themselves to the outside world. They don't remain within the leg, and it's a totally catastrophic break, 
as you can see, these bones are just in fragments. The, they're, the bone is not intact at all, obviously, and it's very, very clear on this x-ray. And this is, again, not Joe Theismann's exact x-ray, but his x-ray probably looks something like this after the injury. And again, the scary thing about having fragments of bone like this in the leg is that it can cause injury to the arteries, the nerves, and the veins of the lower extremity. And suppose you had a nerve that was injured, that could lead to paralysis of some of the muscles of the leg, some numbness in certain spots, depending on which nerve is injured. Similarly, if you have injury to the artery and that's not repaired in time, you can have no blood flow basically to the distal sites of that artery that's injured and you can end up losing the entire leg because the leg dies from lack of blood flow. So after the sack, Lawrence Taylor gets up. Everyone around Thiesman knows something's wrong. Everyone could hear the bone break. Lawrence Taylor is like waving at the sidelines trying to get the doctor's attention. The doctors run out and it's Dr. Charles Jackson, who's the orthopedic surgeon on the field to attended to Thiesman. So according to Dr. Jackson, he's on the field and Theismann's leg is like totally bent the wrong way. There's bone protruding through his sock, like clearly the bone is coming through his skin. He made the, made the point that the bone is super dirty. It's Theismann's on the ground with a broken bone. The last thing you want to do is put the bone back into place inside the body. So basically they just wrapped up the leg and got him to the hospital as soon as possible. If they were to try to set the bone on the field, there's the risk of infection because the bone breaks. It's coming out of his skin. There's dirt. He's on the ground. There's a lot of different germs and things that you're exposed to uh, on a football field, obviously. So it's important to just leave the bone, cover it up, and get Theismann to the hospital as soon as possible. So it took the medical staff about 40 minutes to get Joe Theismann from the field to the hospital. They take him to the OR operating room, and the first thing they did was irrigate the leg. They basically drenched the leg in saline, which is just a sterile kind of water-like substance. They clean the leg, clean the bone as much as they possibly can, flush away all the germs that you can because the next step would be to put the bone back into place to allow his leg to heal properly. Before they reset the bone, another important thing to do is to cut away all the dead or dirty looking skin. It's kind of kind of debridement is the term. But basically the surgeons go in and cut out all the different parts of the skin and the surrounding tissues that look dead already or look like they will die. The point is to basically get away everything that could lead to an infection down the road, clean out the wound as much as possible, and then once everything's cleaned out, once all the bad tissues cut away, then you reset the bone, put the bone in place, and allow Theismann to start his healing process. I did some searching on Theismann's recovery, and obviously it was a very famous injury, so the press was all over it. Supposedly people were trying to visit the hospital pretending to be Theismann's like, family members. And very few of those people, if any, actually were, but people were saying they were Joe's uncle, they were coming to visit him. They had to hire security guards for Joe Theismann's room because so many fans were trying to get in and see him. And Lawrence Taylor himself actually called Joe Theismann the next morning after surgery to check on him. And it's kind of a funny reminder that even though they're opponents on the field, they're still fellow human beings and obviously it was a very very terrible and gruesome injury and it was nice of Lawrence Taylor to check in on him. And this is the x-ray that was taken after the bones had been set, after he'd had surgery, and this was at some point in his healing process. I don't know exactly when. It may not be obvious from this x-ray, but his leg actually healed shorter on that side, on the side of the break. Theismann himself said after the injury when he was practicing and trying to get back into football, he would drop back to pass and every time he would with this different length leg on the side of the injury. He just couldn't drop back and he kind of had to hobble his way and it just wasn't the same as it was before. So July 1986, which is eight months after Theismann's injury, he failed a physical with the Redskins, which basically means the doctors checked him out and felt like he wasn't fit to ever play football again and so they failed him. And because of that, he was unfortunately cut by the Redskins and this injury effectively ruined and ended his career. So in 2002, ESPN does a poll for the 10 most shocking moments in football history, and the Joe Theismann injury was number one on that list. It was above the O.J. Simpson murder case. Like, that's how big of a deal the Joe Theismann injury was at the time, and to this day, it's still one of the most famous sports injuries of all time, and it's so sad and so unfortunate because it ended Joe Theismann's storied career, and again, he'd come off an MVP winning season, and next thing he knows, his career's over after a broken leg. Well, y'all, thank you so much for watching. This video is a little bit different this week, and I'm actually going to make more of these videos because I'm a huge sports fan and I like talking about sports injuries, especially from a radiology perspective since I'm a future radiologist. Thank you again so much for watching and look forward to seeing y'all next week.